are going to make a tree. But we had in your hand at your table, you have this piece of paper. You have this side, and then you have this side. The very first step you're going to do is fold your paper to where the corners touch. Corners and edges touch. Okay, I need a nice fold to where the towards like this, like a crease, hold it down to where there's no wrinkling. Then you're going to open it up, and this is when you're going to take out your mat. Okay, you're going to put the mat under your paper because you might need this because we want to keep our tables clean. And where it says color with oil pastels in this box, that's what you're going to do. You're going to use, you make a pattern, however you like to do, color, pressing hard with the oil pastels any colors that you like that are in your container. You can blend and mix. Just do not use white. I think I'm doing some kind of a pattern here. And it's okay if you get out of the lines. It will be alright. I am skipping that spot so I can do blue. Um, some of my blue can get on my green and some of my purple if I wanted. I press and hold down. Again, any colors that you choose, except for white. Remember, you can always clean your oil pastel with a paper towel if it's messy for you. Now, I am going to go over my yellow with my red a little bit because yellow does not show up the best for this assignment. Now I'm making some kind of diamond. Isn't that kind of cool? Again, you don't have to make, you can just do scribbles in there, but as long as you're pressing hard, you do, I, like my elbow and my bicep and tricep are kind of sore right now because I'm pressing so hard and you want to have that feel. It will be kind of hard. Yeah, there's a little bit of so it'll be, a little, be kind of hard for your arms, but I need you to kind of just color and press hard. If you color lightly, this this really cool assignment won't work. Okay. Now done that, you see a little you might have little cracklies on your table, little crumbs. So I'm just going to shake my paper like that on there, get those little crumbs off, and scoot those to the side. Do not scoot them on the floor, but just scoot them aside. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to close my paper on the fold like that. Now I've already started part of your Y tree. It says create a tree using the letter Y. So I'm going to go ahead and trace over pressing hard with your sharpened pencil. Be careful to not break the point of your pencil. Okay, so now that I've traced over that, I'm going to make my curves, then my Y. I'm going to create my curves, then a V in the middle to create a Y. Curve, line, line, line. Now if you want, you can branch out and create another branch right here if you would like. That's totally fine as well to make your Y's. Remember your Y's can overlap each other like this. One can go under here like that. And that just creates dimension and depth. And it shows the viewer that you know how to create a tree with skill. 
Now your branches can be long and extended and not, ha and not have a Y coming out for a while. Like if I want to have this one come out for a while and not have a branch coming out of it, I can. You could definitely do that. And then the question becomes, how do you close the Y's? How do you close the tree branch? Well, if I wanted to close my tree branches, I could always come to a curve and then a point. Like that. And get really skinny, really thin with their branches. So there I have my tree, and then now we're add. Now we're going to add texture, okay? And you can create your texture for the bark like this, or you can do like little lines like that, little kind of broken lines, wavy lines. You can do little jagged lines, but your tree has got to have some texture. So think of the line that you want to do for your tree, and kind of put that line throughout the branches and the tree trunk. I like these little short lines because they are fast to make. Notice how I haven't had to erase because I was, I was just drawing the letter Y and I'm not worried about mine being perfect because there's no perfect tree. Every tree is different. There's not one tree that looks the same. Now, I want you to think about how you're going to create the leaves and the fo foliage at the top of the tree. And then the texture lines that you're going to use to represent the leaves inside the tree. Okay, so now we have the texture on a tree, and now we're ready for the foliage at the top. And I'm just going to go for your basic bumpity bumps, curves, kind of cotton candy like, tree tops. Okay, so we have our tree top, and now you could either do little spirals in here like that, little scribbles. You could do more of these in here like that. So you go ahead and go ahead and decide what kind of texture you're going to create inside your foliage of your tree top, of your leaves. Again, notice how I am not even erasing. I'm not even worried about eraser. I'm just going with it, with the flow. Make sure your pencil has a good point. Make sure you are pressing hard into your paper because if you're not pressing hard the transfer of the oil pastel would not go onto the other side and that's where all the students in the room will go oh my gosh this is so cool we're kind of creating a reverse scratch art effect I think it's important for every student to know how to make a tree 
that's not that doesn't look like a lollipop I expect these kinds of trees and your landscape artwork for your assignments. I think I got all of them. If you see that you haven't gotten all of them, you can just always go back and add more. Okay, so now I'm going to reveal what's on the inside. Remember, on one side of the page we had oil pastels. So on one side we did not. Now watch as I, when I open up my paper, I have my scratch art design of my tree in here. Okay, And as you see, look, oh, the yellow didn't show up that good. Well, it's okay because it still looks, it still looks okay. Um, you can totally add some grass if you wanted. You could add a, you could add some flowers. You could add some small trees in the background. You could add a house. You could add some birds and butterflies. Whatever you want to do in the background around your tree. And so as as you can see, as I add more details to my tree landscape, it just shows up. And so I could add some heels in the background even so for the background being so very far away in the country. I could even add a little small house in the background. Things in the foreground are very big. Things in the background are very small. the roof. There's the chimney. There's the door and the windows. Um, over here you could have a barn or a silo or some little small animals. I could have a little small animal playing in the back. Like that. You never know what that could be. But it's very small and it's in the background. So I'm going to open it up. It's right there. So continue on with creating your details of your foreground and your background with the, your details of texture and your background and also in your tree. Feel, feel free to add birds, animals, other things that you think should be in your tree. Have a great day.